You may begin. Hello, my name is John Perez and I'm going to give my presentation on my ongoing investigation on whether or not we can really trust our future with the mechanical body. Back in August, when the idea of a research paper was suggested, many ideas came to mind. And I wanted to get into robotics or something along those lines. Originally, I wanted to look into the idea of robots living alongside humans. Eventually, I landed on artificial intelligence and wanted to see how I could look into that. And I started to see article after article about recent advancements in AI and self-driving cars. The ethics came into question. Can we rely on machines to decide the outcomes of terrible accidents? How do we know we should let these robots be able to make these decisions? We don't. That's the scary part. We don't fully know if AI can uphold the ethics of humans. With all this in mind, I propose the question. How will humans develop and determine the ways in which AI can and will be morally and ethically, uh, how, how will humans develop and determine which, the ways AI can and will be morally and ethically in the foreseeable future and which current AI systems are ethical and which are not? Now, let's break down that question into two easy to understand objectives. Part one, curate a list of requirements commonly found for AI to have in a moral or ethical aspect. Part two, create a list of common AI systems that pass or fail in regard to these requirements. But before we get into that, we have to discuss the relevance of some definitions that are important to my question. Code. Coding is what programmers use to create or run operation or do something. Usually these tasks are small, like making a computer type out hello world, or in our case, even more complicated operations. For example, if A, then B. AI. AI is an abbreviation for artificial intelligence, coined by John McCarthy. By the name, we can derive that from coding, we have created a system where multiple operations take place, or a artificial intelligence. For example, if A, because of B, then C. The Turing test. The Turing test was a test created by Alan Turing to determine if an AI could think on its own. These tests is, this test is actually a game called the imitation game, where uh, a computer or an AI is in a room with a human both labeled X or Y randomly, while in another room or an area where you, they cannot see the, the computer or human, a detective, who, uh, a detective asks a set of questions to determine which letter is which. Morality. The idea of morality is very broad, but in the terms we are using, we are going to define morality uh, or something being moral as following the basic ideas of human decency and compassion. Ethics. Something being ethical is almost as broad as morality, but it usually means rules or something following rules that have some sort of moral binding. BFs. BFs are a system of organization that I made solely for this investigation. It stands, it stands for deciding factors. I created this so I can separate the complexity levels of differing AI so that I can validate them better. Now here are some definitions that come up in the requirements later. I thought I'd bring them up now. Subjective, based on or influenced by personal feelings, opinions, or opinions. Uh, objective, not influenced by personal feelings, opinions, or uh, in considering and representing facts. RNG, random number generator, a way to get a random outcome. Bias, preferring one side of an idea more than the other. And malicious, intending or intended to do harm. Now before we go onward, I thought it might be best to define or explain the difference between the BF types now. The first type is simple. The type is only, has only one BF, meaning that it takes in one type of information or it takes in one input to make its output. For example, the Google coin flipper, which you can use by just searching up flip a coin on Google. This is an example of this type in the case that the information it's looking for is if you press the button or not and its output is flipping the coin. Good thing to note though, is that type one AI can still result in two or more outcomes as you see with the coin flipper, getting heads or tails. The second BF type is semi-complex. This one comes in between simple and complex and has two to five BFs. Display its actions. In this case, we're talking about conveyor belt robots, the ones you see in factories that build things like cars or sort packages. These robots are actually controlled by AI, and the AI takes into account what's in front of them, the size, the weight, the shape, and the color, even sometimes which way it's facing. The third type <clears throat> is complex. This type is the type with the most amount of BFs, not actually having a limit on that number. Um, 
This time we were looking at driverless cars and how they take everything into account from road condition to wind speed to other drivers on the road, which are notoriously very unpredictable. The fourth and final type we were looking at is random. And this type doesn't really have a set amount of GF because it usually changes between all of the different RNGs. For this example, we were looking at Google RNG, and it's a good example for RNG because you can change the max amount and the minimum amount number that you can give. Now, I'm going to go over some basic assumptions and hypothesis on the topic. The first one people think is uh, AI is a scary thing that humans need to worry about because it might wipe us out one day. And within, uh, another one is within a couple of years, it will become a very serious issue. My thoughts are that there's many opportunities for improvement of AI, and that the widespread implementation of ethical AI could be very successful. Why is any of this important though? From cameras around the world to red lights, and how rich people invest, uh, and how we look at the spread of disease, AI is everywhere. The amount of things in the country, let alone the world, controlled by AI is astounding. So having the question, is this ethical, is this safe, still be in the air, is very worrying. This is why my research is going to find out if some of the more recent systems are moral and ethical, enough to be continued to be used in the coming years. Now, you might be asking, why don't I accomplish this? My method of process and approach will be a content analysis. A content analysis is when a large amount of information or content is collected at once and analyzed for a qualitative or quantitative purpose. I'll be using it in a qualitative way and I will end up with a new view on things in the end. Why am I picking content analysis? Well, a content analysis allows me to take in all the information I can and compile it into one area section so I can see all the differing ideas and for my topic specifically, it lets me see all of the requirements that I'm looking for. How will I document my findings? A flowchart. A flowchart is a chart that simulates a decision process by having the decision be directed by the creator of the chart. This is usually um, done by having arrows point to the next section or the next directive. And we can see the decision process from start, power on, clean environment, and all the way through. What am I looking for? Uh, I'm striving for the most diverse and well-rounded perspective possible, so there's not much of a context I'm looking for. And here are some select sources that I skim through. Uh, uh, the first source is an institute based in the United Kingdom and is dedicated to finding ethical implement implementation of AI. The second source is an organization that wants to find ways to make more ethical AI. The third source is a task force of the United States military that is devoted to ethical AI. And the fourth source is a list of regulations by the European Union on ethical AI. Now, what did I find? This is the, this is the collection of requirements that I found for the AI to be ethical and moral. The first requirement I have listed is the invasion of privacy. I found that people like to have a private life, so invading the privacy is not wanted. This type that, the types that fall under this requirement are one, two, and three. The second requirement is for AI to be after subjective ideas and not objective ones. Yet, if the AI isn't looking for subjective ideas, then what's the point? This doesn't include simple type AIs. So the types that fall under this category are two and three. The third requirement is AI not, is to, the AI not to be biased. If the AI leans to one side more than the other, it is not ethical. The types being are one, two, and three. There's more. The fourth requirement is for the AI to not break any laws. Breaking the laws would be immoral. Um, the types that fall under this are all of them. The fifth requirement is being some sort of human benefit. May this be world changing or ease of use for humans. This goes for all types. The sixth requirement is no malicious intent. Um, if the AI wanted to keep the, hurt the person who used it, it is as un unethical. This goes for all types. The, second, the seventh requirement um, is user safety guarantee. If the person using the AI or the AI system is not guaranteed safety when they use it, then it is unethical. Um, this goes for all the types. And the eighth, the eighth and last, but most important in my opinion, is transparency. Um, you should know exactly what the AI is doing with your information and what it's created. Um, this goes for all types. Now, this is the flow chart that I mentioned earlier. This one was created by me, and it's just a basic outline of how I decide if the AI system is ethical or not. You can see the first box separates the AI systems into the four different GF types. Then it goes through all of the requirements that I found one by one again. 
there is some that completely skip over the requirements that it does not apply to, like type one skipping over the second requirement. After putting the most commonly found AI systems through the requirements flowchart, I found that only six out of 15 of them passed the test. It's pretty bad if you look at it like this, but three of the AI systems failed only because they didn't, uh, they didn't pass the second requirement. This one is an one that's only about simple AI, but it doesn't get rid of the other ones that failed without number two. Some good or not good, depending on how you look at examples, the, the first one, Facebook ads. These are notoriously very bad, breaking laws and getting the owner of the company put into heat with the United States Supreme Court. This system failed on every requirement other than the second one. The second example is Spotify Shuffle, a very popular music streaming service that passed all of the requirements. So you might be wondering why I put 2010. Well, that's because after 2011, the shuffle was changed. Beforehand, it was actually random, but they sometimes play the same song over and over again because it's random. Um, and with now it's based on your like songs and your like albums, so that fails number three for being biased. And the third example is Apple Face ID. The facial recognition software that opens millions of people's phones actually is less accurate to people of color. The app, Apple was recently sued for this and they have been working to fix this, but this obviously breaks uh, requirement two with no bias. Now, what did I learn? On top of the list of requirements that I found and the list of AI systems that passed or failed, I also learned that there's a decent amount of regulation out there on AI. And it, this helped me a lot regarding my search for uh, requirements, allowing me to watch some presentations on the topic by the EU and pushing my part one investigation in a good way. Another important discovery is that social media is being so invasive, most of the time failing the requirements in multiple sections, this is generally to know what you like and what you dislike, but if someone likes to be more secretive, this is very bad. Another uh, thing to take away from this research is that most things ran by the AI, other than social platforms, are good for humanity, generally helping us. I do think there's room for improvement, and I hope that sometime soon people will start looking at these problems seriously. But how did I maintain an ethical practice system in my research? This whole investigation was actually in the goal of, of uh, finding ethical AI, but I think it would be pretty hypocritical of me to not follow an ethical mindset. Um, no one else was involved in the investigation, so I did not have to scrub people's names uh, or have to worry about proper credit being given. And uh, going along with my last point, um, all the work was done by myself, so there was no plagiarism or stolen ideas. Now, what's next? I think someone else taking the task and continuing where I left off is crucial. The first thing I suggest for the future researcher is to create a team of people to spread the workload out and get more done in a smaller time. The, uh, uh, first, the second thing I suggest is, the first part is, more, uh, is, more, is very important and having people focus on defining and gathering more requirements is necessary, but I would like to see more AI systems being judged. Another thing I think future researchers should take into mind is that some of these things that we're looking at are not public information. That's exactly why I have the whole section on transparency. Um, now that's all, I like, you know, all the time I have to talk about my process and time for questions. Thank you. Which of the various perspectives you explored was the most difficult for you to incorporate into your research inquiry and why? Um, I think looking for um, requirements that didn't overlap in some way mm -hmm. because there was a lot of like, um, there was a lot of publications out there that were talking about the same thing. Oh, we don't want invasion of privacy. Oh, we don't want, you know, the world to end. But there was not a lot that were talking about exactly what they want in multiple cases. Um, so I think uh, finding ones that didn't overlap uh, would be would, was the hardest part. And then secondly, if you had three more months to work on your research question, what additional research strategies would you put into practice? Um, uh, like I said, I would focus more on getting more AI systems evaluated. 
Um, and I would like to see uh, at least like 2025, because AI is almost everywhere. Um, and I would like to, you know, look at all of the things that are out there and find what's best for humans. But like I also said, I would spend a little time on defining the requirements more and gathering some more. Thank you very much.